just not be so easily uh, impressionable. We do things in life and we never, a lot of times, we don't consider four years from now, five years from now. It's just like saving. You say, oh, I, you know, I don't want to save $40 a month, but $40 a month in five years adds up, right? And so it's one of those things where we don't necessarily think about the, the negative effects. We see the results of people that's been eating vegan or plant-based for four years, five years, and they're like, this was the worst decision I ever made. Just about taking the time to do some research and not just jump into because everybody on social media is telling you. We have Kevin in today. So, well, we chatted the other day, so it's good to talk to you again. So, uh, Kevin, yes. uh, where are you, where are you, you're in, you just told me, I think you said you're somewhere in, not North Carolina. I'm in Texas. Texas, that's right. Texas. You're from yes, North I Carolina. I was in North Carolina. That's right. Well, let's see. You've got an interesting, interesting little story. So you were uh, someone who was, well, I'll tell you, just tell us your background. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? So my name's Kevin. Uh, background, as far as nutrition-wise, uh, I started as a vegan in 2015, uh, you know, after watching documentaries, right? Um, and uh, I did that for about two years and some change, and I went back to eating meat again, and then I became a vegan again, up to current, to where we're at now. Um, and so, you know, learning a lot and, 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 you know, just trying to grow as much as I can. And you, you, were, you were in the Marine Corps for a while, and I know you said you did some martial arts stuff, all of mixed martial arts? I did, yeah. I was in the Marine Corps for four years. So I was stationed in North Carolina uh, with an infantry unit. And... Um, yeah, so we end up uh, back. I was into boxing for a little while, and then I end up getting into MMA, and was a little instrumental in uh, the ground floor of preparing the Marine Corps uh, MMA team. And like I told you the other day, I haven't followed up because it's been years, but I'm not sure where that is uh, currently right now. But I was definitely instrumental in that process. Well, that's good to hear. And, and was your growing up as a kid, were you into sports and stuff like that? Did you have a sports background? Yeah, I ran track. Um, you know, I, I developed a little bit late, you know, when I was uh, in the eighth, ninth grade. I was always a small, you know, I'm skinny now, but I was always a small kid. And uh, I started track, I want to say in the ninth grade. And, you know, I was, wasn't competitive and all my peers were bigger than me. And so uh, as I got older, I think it was my 11th year, I decided to try track again. And somebody convinced me to take cross country because they would prepare me for outdoor. And so I did. And by my senior year, I was outperforming all of my peers. I mean, they were like, dude, because I had switched schools. So they were like, man, you need to come back to our school. You know, I mean, I was outperforming everybody. So yeah, I kind of have a little athletic background. Oh, very nice. And so... Um, you said back in 2015, you 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 were persuaded by some documentary. What what documentary did you watch? What 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 pushed you over the limit to say I'm going to try veganism? Actually, I think it was 2014. But I watched the documentary uh, Forks Over Knives. That's what did it for me. Got it. Okay. And I have not seen. I've seen several of the other ones. I've seen like the Game Changers and What the Health and a few other ones. I've not watched Forks Over Knives. Maybe if I watch that, I'll go vegan. I don't know. I kind of doubt it. But. <laughs> ah, so Forks Over Knives was kind of like the original. Like I think that laid the ground for all of the other ones that you just mentioned. Yeah. That was kind of the one that came before those. Got it. Got it. And and so um, as you you know went down your vegan journey, I mean, what were you eating before that? Were you eating just kind of a standard American kind of diet at that point? I was. I was eating all types of junk food, sodas, energy. Oh, man, energy drinks. It was when Monster first came out. I was one of those guys that at least I had at least one Monster a day. <laughs> yeah, I've seen people like that. It's, it's there's so much caffeine in those things. Um, and so like it is so we often see a lot of people will they'll adopt a vegan diet. They all, did you give up junk food when you went vegan initially? Were you cutting all that gar garbage and junk food out? I'm, I'm sure I did. I cut all the processed foods out. Yeah, that's, so, of course, you know, I got some benefits from yep. it because I wasn't dealing with the processed foods. Right. Yeah. It's just, it, or is it, you know, like I said, it's because it, I get a lot of people ask me, is it the meat or is it because you've cut out the junk food? And my answer to that is I think it's probably both. But certainly cutting out the junk food, whether you go plant-based or 
meat-based seems to be a common denominator, and it seems most likely if we're talking about things that make us sick, it's probably all that junk food we're eating. Um, so you did it for two years. What made you decide to stop, stop for a while? So it's funny how we allow certain information to persuade us, right? But in the same documentary, uh, when they were talking about the experiments and stuff that they did, they were saying that, you know, uh, five, when they, they experimented with, with rats and they were saying that when they gave the rats a little bit of uh, meat, uh, it turned on the cancer rate. Um, and so, you know, I was like, well, I can eat a little bit of meat because, you know, I don't have to worry about it. And of course, you start eating a little bit of something and then it just turns into you just, you know, eating whole fledged. So that's kind of what happened. Yeah. I mean, did, when you went vegan, you know, as, as someone who's relatively athletic, you know, as a male particularly, did you like start missing meat? Was it ever like, man, I wish I could have some? Was that ever a thought on your mind? Well, actually, by the time I went vegan, I wasn't really into any type of sports. I, that was kind of like a little, some years later. So I kind of was, you know, married, had, had my son and just living a, a regular life, working and, and just, you know, so I wasn't really into sports at all at that time. I see. Okay. So it, it becomes less, I guess if you don't push your body so hard. You maybe not need as much high quality nutrition, I suppose it's, it's there. And so then, then you, you know, you go back to eating meat and then what, did you start feeling bad again or did you start eating a bunch of junk food again? And then what drove you back into veganism for the second time? Yeah, my body started to deteriorate. I had all types of health issues, um, from, uh, arthritis in my shoulder to, you know, I would take a shower and when I would get out the shower, my skin would itch like profusely i mean lotion wouldn't help it was really bad uh my lower back started uh, hurting a lot you know when i would go for walks or just standing for a long period of time my lower back would hurt um what else let's see here um my kidneys actually started malfunctioning i had a lot of uh, blood in my urine went to the doctors they couldn't figure it out you know they did ct scans uh, they took the camera, they went inside of me, and they couldn't find anything. They were like, oh, you know, you don't have anything to worry about. I'm like, well, I'm bleeding. Like, and it wasn't just a little bit of blood. I'm talking about like one day I went to the, to the bathroom to urinate, and it was so much blood. It was like a crime scene, and I'm not exaggerating. It came out so strong. It spat it all over the walls, on my legs, on the floor. Like, it was just thick, dark blood everywhere. And so that was very scary. And so for them to tell me that I'm okay and there's nothing to worry about, I was like, hmm, okay. So right around that time, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say that would definitely get my attention for sure. I'd be like, wait a minute, there's something, something ain't right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and right around that time, a friend of mine suggested that I, you know, checked out this guy on YouTube and he was a herbalist and he started to, obviously he was talking about it's the meat and the dairy and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, Hey, I'm, I'm desperate, you know, I need something. And so I tried it and, you know, I got some good results because obviously once again, I took the processed foods out of my diet. Yeah. That's it, again, we just see that common denominator of keep doing the processed foods and you keep getting sick. Um, and yet there's, it's, it's interesting how in just in general and not, not, you know, regarding whether you're meat-based, plant-based, whatever. In general, people just sort of just say you did it in moderation and it's not a problem. And we see, we see so much coming out of the establishment, nutrition and diet advice and some of the healthcare advice is you should be able to eat this stuff in moderation and, and it's fine. And, you know, if it's causing you to, you know, bleed out, it doesn't seem like it's a very good idea. Um, so you, you know, and the reason I came to your attention is you're, you're putting out content on social media, I think Instagram and talking about, you know, different, different health aspects of veganism. And I, and I, of course, like, I don't agree with that. And so we saw back and forth. And then you've recently, uh, within the last two months, I believe, said, hey, I'm going to try to add some meat back into the diet. What, what, what was going on with your health to make you make that decision? So I had uh, my scalp started getting really dry. I mean, dry to the point where it was just like flaking thick chunks sometimes it would bleed a little bit um and then my memory my memory was getting very bad i mean 
very spotty, very shoddy. And I just chopped it up to the fact that I was getting older, maybe, and that I just need to try a little bit harder. My eyesight was getting sort of deteriorating also. Um, and so I saw a, uh, a YouTube video that was suggested to me after uh, you did what you did as far as, you know, putting me on the spot and, you know, <laughs> which I guess we can get into that at some point. But uh, and so, yeah, those were the things, uh, the main things. And then uh, I feel like, you know, my semen production, I mean, we're all adults here. My semen production severely dropped uh when uh i went plant-based hey folks it's dr sean baker here if you guys are enjoying these success stories well you can become your own success story you can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet you can sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today we're looking forward to supporting you our community is wonderful and we'd love to see your success yeah, there's actually, it's interesting, there's a study out of Loma Linda University, you know, which is sort of the heart of plant-based vegetarianism, and veganism, which indicated that male vegans had, you know, there was something uh, abnormal with their sperm count, like decreased sperm motility or something like that. So it indicated, you know, problems with, uh, uh, you know, sperm function or development. So it's interesting that you saw that as well. Um, so... You know, you saw who, so you saw a YouTube video. What, what YouTube video did you watch that convinced you to now leave veganism for the second time? So it was a young lady, uh, that was only part of it, but it was a young lady by the name of Janelle. Uh, she was a vegan for five years, yeah. and she basically just came on and to her YouTube followers and just started telling them about, you know, all the different things that she was experiencing, and a lot of the stuff that she mentioned. That's what I was experiencing. So I was like, wait a minute. You know, so that got my attention to look into all the other stuff that some of, you know, the people who reached out to me was trying to share. And so once I, you know, looked into everything, I was like, oh, man, I'm in trouble. Yeah, she probably I imagine she didn't have issues with sperm, sperm production. Like that. I mean, <laughs> right, all the other right. things she could have but seen. She, but she said her, her menstrual uh, went away. You know, it was like it wouldn't show up for two months and then it would come back. And then it was like, it was just really, you know, sporadic. Yeah. I've, I've seen that. It. It's, it's not uncommon, you know, within with a lot of diet culture in general, and particularly when you're under eating and a lot of women, a lot of women would go vegan already have eating disorders and they kind of use that to continue to mask that. Um, so, you know, you saw that and there's, you know, if you look around, there's no shortage of former vegans talking about how veganism messed up their health. I mean, I see that every day. And as someone who does consultations with people, I see it several times a week, quite honestly. So it's, it's not, you know, it's just not for everybody. Um, so when you decided, Hey, I'm going to start adding some meat in the diet. How did you, what did you start with? How did you feel? Yeah, I started with, uh, beef. I did some, uh, some steak and potatoes. Um, you know, I was like, you know, I wasn't, a hundred percent sold on just the meat yet. So I was like, you know, I'll do some steak and potatoes. And so, uh, the day that I announced it, I want to say I had tried it the day before, uh, which was a Friday or a Thursday, one of them. And so, yeah, I started off with some steak and potatoes. And as you added that back in the diet, a lot of people talk about, I, I just start to feel better. You know, maybe you start getting some nutrition that you're otherwise missing out. And we don't, we don't, we might not even know what it is. I mean, you know, I could say maybe it's a creatine, maybe it's a carnosine, carnitine, the taurine, you know, the bioavailable proteins, the, you know, the zinc, the iron, who knows what it could be. It could or any of there's 50,000 different compounds in beef and it could be any, any number of those. But how did you start noticing? I, I know you mentioned, you said your thought process was, I watched your video and you said, my thought process is coming better. And you saw, you saw some improvements then. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, one of the, the first thing I noticed was my energy level. You know, uh, I would get I would get home from work and just sit on my recliner and just be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go to the gym today." Yeah, that that I didn't have the energy to do any of that. Um, and so the first thing I noticed was my energy uh, went up. And then as the weeks went on, I noticed getting you know I was getting stronger and stronger. 
Um, and then my, just my mental cognition came back. I mean, it was like a, a huge difference. And then I also noticed that I wasn't squinting and trying to like, you know, I don't wear glasses, but I just noticed that my eyesight was getting bad. Um, and I noticed that I didn't have to do that anymore. So now it's a lot clearer. So those were some of the first things that I noticed right off the bat. Yeah, did that, I mean, obviously that probably sort of helped to uh, solidify your decision. You know, you're saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try this out and, and no guarantees, but certainly when you start seeing those better things improve. Um, did you, you know, I know you said you've been, you're able to, you felt like your muscles were returning. Is that fair to say? You got, you're starting to put on more lean mass? I am. So I, um, well, the first thing was I had more energy. I've been working out pretty much every day, just about since I started eating meat. Um, uh, and I even got a gym membership, you know, started back going to the gym. And when I work out the fatigue factor that, you know, I, like I said, I was pretty physical, you know, in my twenties uh, and stuff. And so I know when I would work out, the fatigue factor was, you know, was there. But now when I work out, I'm not as fatigued, not, not as sore. And I feel like I can lift or go a lot more, uh, you know, eating this way. So it's definitely noticeable. Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, like something that is, you know, we talked about this privately. You know, there's a there's sort of a, a lack of well, I wouldn't say a lack of there seems to be a. Uh, um, you know, a push, particularly for, and, and you like to use the word melanated or people of color or something, you know, whatever, 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 whatever the preferred term is that it's, it's more pushed to eat the plant-based stuff, which is often more processed food. Uh, you know, particularly when you get into these faux meat things, these fake burgers, these beyond meat, and it seems to be doing a disservice to that community in my, in my view, you know, and I, and like I said, I, I'm just trying to get the message out to everybody to listen, but, you know, for some reason, it seems like veganism has taken a stronger hold in, the, in, the, in that particular group than maybe some others. Do you, do you have any thoughts on that, Kevin? Yeah, I definitely, I think I agree with you on that one. Uh, it seems like I was talking yesterday to, to on this live that I was uh, attending that it seems like the pandemic had a really big factor in that, right? So a lot of, you know, a lot of us were at home, we're on YouTube and, you know, uh, a lot of people are pushing the veganism, a lot of melanated people. Uh, and so, you know, when you go to a live for one of these gurus, one of these, you know, herbalists or whoever, or when you look at a lot of the things that they talk about, there's a lot of comments. There's a lot of people that are there and they've been convinced that the problem is the meat and, you know, meat has been demonized and, they, they talk a little bit about the processed foods and they mention, you know, you have to stop drinking sodas and stop doing this, but it's the plants that's propped up and nobody's understanding that, you know, the bioavailability of plants and the anti-nutrients and, you know, all the different things that, you know, we can't absorb. Our body isn't made like the ruminant animals, right? And so we can't absorb plants, you know, because, you know, they like to also compare the gorilla and compare the cow and different things like that. But it, it's, it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we have a vastly different digestive system, certainly from a ruminant animal. But even, you know, even some of these bigger primates like, you know, gorillas and whatnot, they have a, they have a huge rear gut fermentation capacity, which we don't have as human beings. And I know people talk about, well, look how big and strong they are. And, I, you know, I turn around and say, well, the biggest, strongest animal in the world is a is a is a carnivore it's a blue whale i mean they're 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 monstrous and all they eat is meat all day long so it's it's it's, it's silly to talk about other animals in my view and i think you really have to talk about who we are as human beings and it doesn't matter where you came from whether it's from asia or europe or africa or south america meat has always been part part of every single culture i mean it's 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 you know what largely made us who we are as a species and that's one of the reasons as a species we can exist on all these different uh different climates and different locations because there's there's always some kind of animal that we're able to consume whereas if you said i could only eat if i could only eat you know these tropical fruits and these balanced you know taste the rainbow type stuff you'd be very limited in where you could live as a, as a human species because most of that stuff doesn't grow everywhere um do you find you know are you getting a lot of pushback now because you know a lot of times once you enter that vegan community 
uh, they become very aggressive for anybody that sort of is a, becomes apostate. You know, if you, if you, you know, decide it's not right for me anymore, a lot, a lot of time they, you'll hear that you were never really a vegan and how dare you do all this stuff. Are you seeing any of that yet, Kevin? I am. Um, obviously, I've had a few people unfollow me. I've had a few people say that they were disappointed in my decision. Uh, I've been called, you know, just up recently, I've been called, you know, a dumbass and just all types of stuff because, you know, instead of listening to what's actually being said, you know, everybody's in their emotions based on what they assume. Um, so, yeah, I definitely had some pushback from it. And, you know, one of the things I'll say this, that kind of sold me also uh, the second time around on the veganism and plant-based is that, you know, I grew up, uh, I was born in Trinidad. And so, you know, in my, we had a lot of land and stuff like that. And so I grew up climbing trees and picking mangoes and, and all types of different, you know, fruits and stuff. So, you know, I was used to eating that. And so it wasn't hard to sell me on the benefits of fruits. But I also forgot that we didn't just eat fruits. We ate all types of other animals too. So, you know. Yeah, it's interesting. Even if you look at like all these indigenous populations, and even when they live in tropical zones and they're surrounded by fruit, they're all they're still spending four six hours a day hunting because they've realized the 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 the, the need for that. You know, and like I said, you have more options when you live in a tropical environment. You can you can eat more fruit because it's around you. But at the same time, none of those people voluntarily choose to to go without meat. It's just such an important aspect of that. Do you? Um, I know you're kind of looking into, you know, how you're going to sort of go forward. And you talked about uh, writing some things down, like how to, you know, how to how to get healthy and maybe, you know, uh, try to inspire people either, you know, within your cultural group or just in people in general. What what do you what do you what do you think is? I mean, what kind of things are you working on? Um, well, you know, incorporating what I learned because uh, there are some positive things you learn from, you know, learning about herbs and, and fasting and different things like that. And so, you know, a combination of, you know, say, you know, 90, 10, you know, where you, you know, might fast and might incorporate a few herbs and stuff like that to help flush, you know, all of the trash out of your body and, the de you know, detox yourself. So um, I recently put together a guide called um, how to instantly improve your health. And, you know, just talking about some of the things that I've learned from the plant base, but also the majority in the, uh, of what's important and what the body needs for real nutrition and how, you know, the body cannot absorb nutrition the way we've been told. Um, and so that's one of the things that I'm working on. And I have another project that I'm, I've started, uh, you know, trying to gear towards the melanated community because we've been severely taken advantage of by, you know, the marketing of the vegan stuff and, you know, all of the, the processed vegan foods that's just flying off the shelf. Um, and, you know, the long-term, you know, negative, negative effects of those, you know, we haven't fully seen yet. So. Yeah, I, I want to, you know, uh, you know, I think there's a concept that, you know, meat is kind of our food and we can use plants maybe as a, as a seasoning or, or even in, in a medicinal purpose. You know, we use a lot of medications that have been developed have been concentrated of different different plant materials. So there's that thought that plants can be used sometimes in a, in a medicinal capacity for some people. So that that sort of can can potentially make sense. And you mentioned, you know, like I said, I, 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 I see that a lot of populations, whether they're melanated or not. Uh, particularly people that, that, that struggle financially are often taken advantage of. And, and this processed food, this really cheap food is marketed to them. And, you know, it, you know, it fills your belly up, but at the same time, it leaves you empty. You know, it, it, it nutritionally, it leaves you, you know, you're kind of devoid of nutrition. And, you know, it's, so I think it's good that you get that message out there that, you know, we, I, I would, you know, I wouldn't accept the cheap you know, the cheap food. I mean, it's, it's interesting that we live in the, you know, we're in the 21st century. We have such tremendous resource, you know, we're, 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 we're flying to Mars or trying to, and we're trying to colonize Mars and all this tremendous stuff. You see all, all the, the things we've built and yet we can't feed people properly. We can't yeah. feed them proper nutrition. And I think it's important to, 
you know, not be satisfied with the answer as well. You know, you got to eat this cheap stuff because uh, you're going to save grandma or the planet or something like that. So I commend you for uh, taking that journey because I think it's important that, that we all lift each other up, no matter where where we who we are and where our background is, that we all have access to this high quality food. Where do you so just as far as you know, you started more into a more meat meat based diet. What does that look like now from from day to day for you, Kevin? Um, so in the mornings I'll do uh, steak and egg. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I, I I still do. Uh, I drink milk every now and then. So I found a farm uh, that has unpasteurized um, milk and you know uh, all of the natural grass fed beef and eggs and stuff like that. So I'll do uh, steak and eggs in the morning, and then for lunch I might do some steak. Uh, or maybe some chicken. Um, and then at dinner, I might mix it up with some salmon and, or shrimp. But the majority of what I'm eating is uh, steak. Yeah, I, I had steak and eggs for breakfast myself. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty classic good meal for sure. And how do you, I mean, do you notice a difference in your digestion now? A lot of people notice like when they go carnivore, their digestion quiets down. It seems to be more, it just feels better. Do you, have you noticed any of that? I like that term, quiets down. Absolutely. So uh, even on a plant-based uh, diet, uh, obviously I was going to the bathroom all the time because the plants just go right through you. You sit down and you eat a big bowl of salad and you're still hungry after that, you know, and then you're going to the bathroom two, three times a day. But now as a carnivore, you know, uh, eating this way, it's, I might go to the bathroom maybe twice a week now. Um, and it's very minimal. So I, I see that all my food is actually being utilized and digested uh, and processed in the body. So, Yeah, and that's a good understanding because a lot of people mistake that for thinking they're constipated. And it's not. It's just that you're utilizing all the nutrition rather than constantly getting rid of all the waste that you're eating. And, you know, when I look at, uh, like, for instance, you, you know, you mentioned like a gorilla. And, you know, if we look at what a gorilla eats, they eat something like 40, 50, 60 pounds of food a day. And I mean, you know, and they're not that big. I mean, they're 250, 300 pounds. If I had to eat 50 pounds of food a day, I mean, I would, I would be, you know, I'd probably be 900 pounds or something like that. And so it's a very inefficient way to get your nutrition in for sure. And you notice, you, you do notice that is that, you know, the, the waste is not as, as frequent. And I think that's kind of probably a good thing. It just means you're, you're, you're getting that high quality nutrition. Have you had any downsides up to this point? Has it all been good or has there been some transition issues? Did you have any struggles when you switch, switched over? Um, I wouldn't say downside. I mean, obviously, well, I'm not going to say obviously, but it's a little bit pricier, you know, to eat uh, carnivore, uh, at least in my opinion, because I'm trying to get the quality stuff. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say I've had any like no physical issues, no stomach problems. Uh, I've heard people say that they had, you know, in the beginning, uh, really bad bowel movements and diarrhea and stuff like that. But I haven't experienced any of it. Yeah, well, that's great. And and most people do pretty well with it. There are some people that transition and have, have some issues when they're getting used to it. Has anybody in your personal life, family, friends that are close to noticed any differences or said anything or saying, what the heck are you doing now? What, are you in the latest flavor of the week type of thing or What's been the, the personal experience? Yeah, I've been definitely getting uh, compliments. I'm, I'm putting on a little bit of weight. I mean, I'm not quite, you know, there yet, but it's, people are really starting to notice it. They're like, hey, well, you know, have you been working out? Or the ones who know that I've transitioned, they're like, okay, I see you're starting to put on a little bit of weight. Uh, so it's definitely getting uh, noticeable. Um, and I've had a few comments, a few people mentioned it to me on social media and I couldn't see it. It took me, I just noticed it about a week and a half ago. Um, I couldn't, they kept saying your face is looking better. You're looking a lot healthier. And I, I mean, I couldn't see it, but I see it now though. Yeah. I mean, I, I can, you know, obviously I'm biased, but it, it does seem like you've got a little more just life. You know, you look more, more alive, I guess, if that's a word, you know, and we see a lot, of, a lot of people when they go on a vegan diet, they, they do not all, but some, they do start to look a little bit haggard and stuff like that. Um, do you, um, you know, as far as, uh, are you, you know, you said you've been going to the gym now on a regular basis. Is that just because you feel better? Or is it, or are you trying to, are you, or do you have a goal in mind? 
So it's a combination of both. I've been wanting to go to the gym, been wanting to, you know, get back in shape and work out and stuff. I just didn't have the energy, um, you know, as a vegan. I would probably uh, do it for like a day or two. And then I'd be like, okay, yeah, that's enough for me. Um, and so my goal, you know, I want to put on, put on a little bit of weight. Um, not sure. I don't have like a set goal, but I do want to bulk up a little bit. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now, just eating and working out and seeing how that goes. Are you, you know, as far as, I mean, I know you got your social media. Well, let's talk about that. So your social media, where, where are you found on social media right now? So my uh, social media, I'm on Instagram mainly. I'm on Facebook, but not as much, mainly on Instagram uh, under Kevin, the visionary one. Um, and so that's, that's predominantly where I'm at right now. And what do you, I mean, if you've got a message for people, you know, within the, you know, the, like you like to say, the melanated community, is there anything you'd want to want to share to those folks? Yeah, um, I would definitely say, you know, before you jump into any type of diet or nutrition or follow what you're, you know, the popular thing online, do some research. Uh, don't just look up things like, is our fruits good for you or you know, uh, are there any health benefits to, you know, being a vegan, you know, look up things like our fruits and vegetables bioavailable. Uh, what's the comparison of the nutrients that you absorb in your body from plants versus meat? Um, you know, things like that, you know, just, just follow my page. I'll be posting, you know, things in comparison and showing you how we've been kind of duped follow dr sean's page um you know so those are some of the things that i would say you know the vegan diet initially you feel good initially you know you might get some results but the long-term effects can be negative you know and that's really what i'm going to be you know trying to really focus on is the long-term negative effects of veganism do you, um, you know, and I, I, I like to tell people, you know, you got to listen to yourself too. I mean, cause there's a lot of people that, you know, they just, they believe so strongly in a concept or a belief or an ideology that they deny what's happening right in front of them, that they're, they're getting sicker. And, you know, you just kind of, I've seen a lot of people that were formerly vegan that said they went, you know, for five, seven, eight, ten 10 years with declining health and they never could sort of you know, bring themselves to believe it was a diet that was causing it. And then as soon as they put meat in, it was like, it was like a miracle. So maybe not wait until, you know, your teeth fall out or you, you, you develop right. permanent damage or something like that. Um, do you, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, and I don't know how to reach it, but I mean, we're seeing a particularly push towards the younger and younger kids, you know, we're seeing these messaging to, to kids. And do you see a lot of, I mean, are you seeing a lot of sort of people pushing in the, in the community you're in, like pushing towards kids to, to go a certain way? Absolutely. Um, a lot of the, you know, the bigger names, quote unquote, bigger name, uh, plant-based gurus and people who push the plant-based, they, they put their, their children in the forefront and they show, you know, Hey, my baby is healthy. Hey, this is my six year old. And they've been plant-based for, this long and they're showing all of the, the foods that they prepare and they're giving all the suggestions. And it's, it's definitely uh, something that's being pushed on the younger people. And they're trying to convince the adults that it's good for their children. Um, I'm also finding out about, you know, people trying to convince mothers not to breastfeed their young because their, their breast milk is dirty and it's unhealthy. And yeah. And so there's a, there's definitely, a lot of falsehood being pushed uh, in the vegan community, for sure. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that last one in particular, telling mothers not to breastfeed, I mean, and there was a campaign to try to try to push breastfeed into supplements and then, or, or, you know, formula. And you look at some of the formula ingredients and they're, they're pretty shocking. I mean, it's corn syrup and, you know, it's, it's you know, soybean oil and, and all this stuff that I, I think is big problem for particularly little, our, our smallest, most vulnerable developing little babies that they're, that they're being asked to put that stuff on there. Um, do you, uh, you know, as far as, uh, so you said you're in Texas and Texas, there's a lot of meat eating in Texas for sure. I mean, I, I, I kid around that, that in some counties in Texas, 
veganism is a misdemeanor, but I'm, you know, you know, <laughs> kidding about that. But, but I mean, certainly Texas is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a meat place. I mean, there's, in case you don't know that 22 million head of cattle, our largest cattle herd is in Texas in the United States. Uh, and, you know, it's a, it's certainly a big place in there. Do you find like, um, and I can't remember what area you were in. in te- I think near Dallas, if I'm not mistaken, but. Yep, the you, Dallas area. Yeah. Do you find like different, I mean, are you seeing a difference in like the, the urban areas where plant-based is being pushed more than say the suburban or the rural areas? Or do you, do you, do you, do you get out in different areas? Definitely uh, plant-based is being pushed uh, more in the melanated communities and uh, the less, uh, you know, we'll say less fortunate communities. Um, if you go and you, you know, like Google, you know, uh, vegan food or something like that, uh, you'll see more of, you know, uh, I'll just say more of either like an Asian version or a, you know, white version in the rural areas. But then you have like, uh, you know, a black version and uh, the melanated community, black community where it's like soul foods and different things like that, but it's all vegan. So it's, it's that, that trap to keep you in what you're already familiar with, but we'll make an alternative for it. So you're thinking that, oh, I'm still eating food because it's kind of what I'm familiar with, but there's no nutrients in it. Yeah, that, that's for sure. And you know, you see like, like Kevin Hart, you know, he is just announced in LA, he's got his little vegan restaurant he's out announced. And we see a lot of members of the prominent members of, you know, the African-American community, you know, starting to push this stuff. And, you know, I think that, you know, when you have like, like athletes, like, uh, I don't know, like Chris Paul and some of these folks, you know, pushing this, this sort of narrative, a lot of people like to look up to them and they, they follow them. And it's unfortunate. Do you think, uh, and like I said, I know it's, uh, I, it'd be nice to see some very well-known people of all communities get out there and say, Hey, look, meat is what we need to eat. And, you know, like I said, obviously, both you and I are not, you know, none of us are the rock or anything like that. You know, we don't have the millions and millions of followers, but as, as all of us collectively do this, I think we can make, make a difference and it's important difference to notice. What do you think is, uh, you know, probably one of the most important things for someone who's young, impressionable to do even outside of diet? Is there any other good advice you give for people? Um, just, you know, not be so easily uh, impressionable, you know, Uh, like I said, you know, we do things in life and we never, a lot of times we don't consider, you know, four years from now, five years from now, it's just like, you know, saving, you know, you say, Oh, you know, I don't want to save $40 a month, but $40 a month in five years adds up. Right. And so it's one of those things where, you know, we don't necessarily think about the, the negative effects and you hear, you see the results of people that's been, you know, eating vegan or plant-based for four years, five years. And they're like, this was the worst decision I ever made. And so, you know, once again, it's just about taking the time to do some research and not just jump into, because everybody on social media is telling you, you know, sharing videos of this guy who's talking about, you know, parasites and how you know there's all these parasites in food and you need to detox and you know that's one of the biggest trap you know detoxing you know not so much of trying to convince them right away to be plant-based but they convince them that you know you need to detox and get all of these uh parasites out of your body from the meat that you've been eating and all of this stuff and then you get the hook in you to say you know what i'm going to try plant-based for a week. I'm going to try it for a month. And that's, you know, one of the things that, one of the ways I found that they hook people. Um, so just, you know, research and think about, you know, what you're doing before you actually jump all the way in with it. Yeah. What is, and just, you know, and I, you haven't been that long within this sort of meat-based carnivore community. I mean, have you noticed a difference in the, in the vibe of the community or the feel or how people treat each other? Or do you notice, I mean, are you noticing any difference or are people all the same regardless? Yeah. So in the beginning, the first day when I woke up and, uh, you know, I saw you had reposted my video on your page, I thought they were attacking me. I mean, I was deleting people and, you know, just telling them they didn't know what they were talking about. But it was it wasn't until after I started listening and paying attention. And I was like, 
they weren't being mean. They really weren't. They were just trying to help me. They were like, hey, listen, guy, listen, we're trying to tell you that the information you're talking about doesn't make sense. It's not scientifically sound. And we just want to help you because we've either been there. We know somebody that's been there. So uh, they've been very supportive uh, and, you know, along the way, sharing their knowledge and encouraging. So I would say it's been it's been very pleasant. Yeah, no, I, you know, I can tell you, Kevin, you know, if you decide to go back to a pl- even a plant based diet, I don't think anyone's got, from this community is going to say anything. They're not going to call you, you know, like it's you know, I, I think the problem is with the veganism is there's an ideology attached to it. And once you leave, it's like relieve, leaving a cult or leaving a religion or, you know, how dare you, you know, because, you know, they, they often associate that, you know, now. And how do you do? Because I don't know if you got into this part of it, because there's some people that, that truly believe that eating a plant based diet is the best for them healthy. And there's other of them that think that um, I'm saving animals and I'm, you know, anything if I eat any meat at all, it's cruelty to animals. Is that was that part of your thought process at any point? Absolutely not. So I would tell people, I said, I'm so I, I called myself plant based. I wasn't vegan because, you know, I would say, oh, I can care less whether you eat meat or not. I'm just not eating it. And I don't think it's good for you. But no, I was never into because, you know, even with veganism, they focus so much on the cows and uh, the sheep and stuff like that. But they don't pay attention to the, the snakes and the rabbits and all the different animals that get killed from the pesticides and the plowing and the machines and everything that goes into, you know, you know, the crops. Right. So it's amazing how there's a bias there. You, you say you care about the animals, but it's only some of the animals. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it seems to me if you were, you know, truly vegan and you cared about all animals, then you, you know, uh, you know, yes, you want to, you know, protest a dairy or something like that, but equally you should be protesting a big farm where there where all these rabbits are being, you know, it's not accidental. It's this intentional. I mean, they're out there shooting them. They're out there uh, spraying poisons on them. I mean, this is not done, not done by accident. So why are they not protesting those things as well? I'm, I'm, I'm confused by that for some reason. Kevin, unfortunately, we're running out of time. I do have to go. I'm going to give you another minute or two to say anything else you want to do and make sure you share your social media and anything else you'd like to share before we go. Well, I really appreciate you taking this time uh to talk to me and to share what i have to say with your community um and once again i want to thank you for what you originally did which was put me on the spot and tell me that you you didn't say but your community did that i didn't know what the heck i was talking about um and you can find me on instagram at kevin the visionary one um and um you know once again i appreciate it and, and thank you for your time Kevin likewise. And like I said, I, you know, like I said, putting people on the spot, but I, I just think we should all be open-minded and not get too narrow. Even on the carnivore community, I tell people, Hey, you got to listen to your body. If it's not working then you got to go do something else for sure. Anyway, thanks everybody. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, Kevin. Have a good one and good luck to you. And, and I'm sure we'll be talking to you down the road. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Bye everybody. Take care. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Right. Take care.